Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and today's project uh, is going to be just for absolutely fun. What I'm going to make today has pretty much no practical purpose whatsoever. <coughs> Excuse me. But this is just going to be a fun little project. Uh, somewhere down the road uh, over the last couple months, I saw a video or don't really know how it, what piqued my interest in it, but I uh, got interested in steam whistles, air whistles, and went on an endeavor to try to find some drawings and some prints uh, for maybe making some in the shop, and didn't find anything. Uh, uh, found some original patent drawings, but uh, of course they were using castings. Um, I did find one fellow, his name was Ken Bone, B-O-H-N. I'll put a link to his video uh, down in the description that gave me the inspiration to make these. Uh, he gave some, it's a, only about a seven minute video, so you may want to check it out. But uh, he showed breakdown of one he had made and uh, didn't give any real particulars, but uh, in gleaning through some information in the comments, I was able to get all the information I thought was necessary to build some air whistles. Uh, I don't have access to steam, so uh, I'm sure this would work with steam just as well. But in the last video, you saw me make this little manifold right here, this three-stage manifold. And so what I'm going to do today in this project, I'm going to make three different uh, air whistles, three different lengths. One I'm going to be three inch, one six inch, and one twelve inch. From what little bit of research that I've done and uh, information I've been able to glean is that the pitch of a whistle is determined by the length of the tube, not necessarily the uh, diameter of it. I've got a pretty good supply of this little thin, this is aluminum tubing. This was a display out of a retail store. Um, there was about six or eight pieces of it, uh, probably three, four foot long. Um, so I've got a three inch piece, a six inch, and a 12 inch cut. And we're gonna put those together. Uh, we're gonna make them into, it's gonna be all aluminum except for the brass finial on it. But I built, did build a prototype. And let me get my air hose over here. Now if you got headphones on or earbuds, you might be uh, prepared, you might want to be prepared to pull them out, pull them out right quick. Let's see, let me hold it on the base. That's just, uh, that's 50 pounds of air pressure in through the bottom. What we've got to build, of course this is the resonator, this piece of pipe. We're going to build a plug for this end, turn just a simple little uh, brass finial. As a matter of fact, I've already got the brass finials and the, and the brass nuts made. Uh, but we're going to turn a plug for the top. This part down here is actually three pieces. Uh, this is the bell or the cup where air will come in through the bottom, come up through this, and uh, out around this parameter here, uh, perimeter. This is the bottom on this one. This bottom is about a half inch thick, which is entirely not necessary. I'll be using probably some uh, eighth inch thick material for the bottom on the next one. But inside in here, we have a ring. We have an air deflector in there that channels the air coming through this bell or cup here right to, so that it's right on the edge of this pipe. As a child, if you, I'm sure at some point in time in school, you may have even gotten in trouble for it. You picked up a piece of paper and you held it real tight between your fingers and blew across that edge. 
and that appears to be the principle of an air whistle. So enough talk, let's go over to the mill and start and work on this bell. One thing I failed to mention uh, during the introduction, but all the dimensions for all this material will be dependent on the diameter of whatever tubing you start with. This that I've got is approximately an inch and a half. 1.425 looks like, uh, maybe 1.5 to the outside. Everything would be relative to this. Your cup or the base, uh, I'm sorry, the cup or the bell, I'm using one inch thick aluminum that I've already faced on the front and the back or both ends. Uh, this needs to be a half inch larger diameter than your, than your tubing. Uh, so you got about a quarter inch on each side, approximately half inch larger. Also, when I had this in the lathe and I was uh, facing the ends, I just used my center and uh, uh, drilled a center hole in that. And I've used that to come over here on the mill. I've got a piece mounted in the mill now. And I used just this uh, little uh, pointed center in there until I got that lined up. That's plenty close enough for what we're doing. Now, what we're going to do is drill four holes in there. These holes will be 0.5 inches off of center in each of the four directions. Uh, going to drill four holes in there. So I have the DRO zero out, zeroed out here. Now I'm going to move half inch over. and drill our first hole. All right, what we have now is four holes, four quarter inch holes drilled in there that the air will pass through. Next thing we're gonna do is drill and tap four holes for 632 screws uh, to hold the bottom onto this. Those holes, in, in my case, I'm using an inch and a half here. Uh, I'm sorry, using uh, two inch material. These holes will be 0.875 from the center. So I'll come back to the center. Now 0.875. And this is the uh, tap drill for 632.
Okay, now we have one more operation to do on that. We have our four holes, four quarter inch airflow holes uh, drilled. We have our four 632 uh, holes to mount the bottom drilled and tapped. Now we're going to go back to the center and we're going to drill and tap that for a 3 8 24. All right, I think we're done with this piece now over here in the mill. Just a little cleaning off and uh, some deburring. The next piece we're going to work on is the bottom that will that will bolt on here. Now we're, we're ready to begin work on the bottom. Uh, the bottom needs to be the same size as the bell itself of the cup. Uh, I didn't have any round stock that size, uh, thin, so I just took some uh, two and a half inch uh, flat bar and cut it just a little longer, a little longer than that's why. This is two inch, cut that two and a quarter. Then I located the center just from point to point. I've got a, one of the pieces mounted in the, uh, <clears throat> mounted in the device now and use the pointed center to locate that uh, center punch that I made over on the workbench. Now what we're going to do here is drill, remember we moved point eight seven five in each direction to get these 632s. We're going to do the same thing over here but they're going to be clearance holes for 632 which I'm using a 530 seconds bit. So from center, we'll go 875 in each direction. Now the center of each piece will need to be drilled and tapped for a quarter inch NPT, National Pipe Thread. Uh, that is what our air hose or air line, air nipple will connect to. So I'll go back to center. And this is the uh, the tap drill for the quarter inch NPT. And as I said in my previous video, I discovered that if you put a little countersink in uh, when you're threading this, this tapered uh, NPT type threads, a little countersink to begin with helps Gives a little clearance for that taper to begin with. So I don't want much here since this is uh, only eighth inch thick material. All right, and that's down to our 12 threads. So I'll back that out and then try a, uh, a quarter inch male in that. And that starts in there just fine. Very good. All right, what I'm gonna do now, after I get this deburred, I'm going to bolt this on to, temporarily bolt that on to the bottom, mark around this outside here, 
then carry these pieces over to the bandsaw and clip those corners off. I won't try to video that. I'm over here at the lathe now. I think we're finished on the mill, but I've got one of our uh, cups or bells in the, uh, in the lathe chuck now. I've got my backing plate on there. I'm not really concerned about the outside of marring that right now. We're going to clean that up as one of the last stale steps. But what I want to do is cut a or bore out a quarter inch deep uh, and leave about a quarter on each side. What I want that bore in there, I want it just enough so that the tube will slide in there. So I'm going to zero out the door, come out here, go in 250 thousandths, and set my carriage stop. Just like everything else on this, uh, this project, none of these dimensions are extremely crucial. Uh, and again, this is going to be dependent on the diameter of the tubing we're using. I'm using my small boring bar now, and it requires a half inch to get in, and all I've got is a 3 8 hole there. So I've just got, just got to peck it a little bit to begin with uh, to get the boring bar started. All right, that's the quarter inch depth now. And I'm going to just manually feed this in until I get past this interrupted cut. All right, now we're going to take a measurement. And that is 1.332. So I'm going to set a dimension. My pipe is about 1.5, so I'm going to uh, go 1.510 minus the 1.322. That says I still got another 188 thousandths to go, so I'll work that down until I get close and then start measuring it with the uh, tube itself. All right, we're just going in there. As you can see that, we've got just maybe, maybe 10 thousandths clearance uh, if you push it all the way to one side. Now I'm gonna, this side that does not have the bottom mounting holes in it, is the critical side. That's the one you want reasonably close for the diameter of the pipe, just so the pipe fits in. All right, I'm going to turn it around now. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now, boring over here, we want the same uh, zero out there. We want the same quarter inch deep, which I moved my uh, <clears throat> micro adjust on the stop just a little bit to clean up that bottom. All right. We're not really concerned about the exact diameter of the bore on this side as long as we don't get into our holes at the bottom mount on mount with. But we want to go a quarter inch deep to leave uh, about a half inch of material in there. That's got room for the bottom to go on here now, 
Air will blow in through that center hole we had for on the bottom, up through here, and then out the top. I've got a piece of uh, threaded rod in the chuck now uh, with a couple spacer nuts on the end. Got it good and tight. And I've got a center drilled in the end of that. What I've done is uh, mounted the bottom onto the bell, used a little Loctite in the screws because it uh, doesn't have to come out again. As you can see in there now, there's that space uh, for the air to go in through the fitting that's out here. Air will go in, come out over here, and uh, vibrate against the edges of our tubing. But let's see. I don't know whether I'll have to deburr that threading. That uh, No, that's going to go. All right, those nuts back there were just to keep it spaced off of that for me. Uh, now we're going to bring the tailstock in. Tighten it good and tight. But what we're going to do is dress this down, turn this down till it's round, and we get a slight, just a minute amount, just enough to turn this and finish this outside edge. Once I get it round, I can take a little, little deeper cuts than I am right now. Right now, I'm only going about 20 thousandths at a time off the diameter. All right, I'm almost round now, so I'm going to get about 40 thousandths at a time. Okay, the last couple of passes have only been about five thousandths. Uh, I'm sorry, about ten thousandths off the uh, diameter because I'm starting to to uh, uh, cut the bell now. We'll take a look at that, and that's clean all the way around. So I'm going to take this tool and put just a very, very slight. Uh, chamfer on this edge right here, just enough to move the, remove that sharp edge on there. All right, that's got the bottom and the uh, uh, and the bell made into one piece now. All right, in our bell <coughs> or cup, this is called a bell on some drawings, and it's called a cup on others. <coughs> Excuse me, but in any case, it's a device to channel the air coming in the bottom here up through and to get it to come right around the edges of our tubing. Remember we bored this out just so that would clear there, just to have a little clearance in it. Now what we need to make for inside of here is a deflector, something that will deflect that air coming up through these four holes right to this edge right here. I've got a piece of inch and a half stock, which in my case is just just right after I cleaned it up. It's a, we want about the same clearance here. Uh, whatever hole you come up with on this side. Remember we wanted it just big enough to, for your tubing to go in. This air deflector in here, we want about 25,000 smaller than this diameter right here. And again, in my case, the inch and a half, uh, just a couple thousandths off the edge to dress it up was just right. So what I'm going to do first, we want a pass-through hole in this, and we want it to fit our 3 8 inch rod that's going to go through the center of all this, hold it all together. We want that fairly snug. 
So to, it's a 3 8 inch rod, and of course we all know that a 3 8 inch bit is going to drill a little bit large. So I'm going to use a 23 64, so that's a 64th under 3 8 And since I've got to make three of these, I'm going to, I'm going to drill probably inch, inch and a quarter deep, something other like that. All right, there's an inch and a half. That's going to be a little cleaned up in between each operation, in between each piece. Like I say, I've got to make three of these. So now I'm going to use my 3 8 inch reamer and clean that hole out two 3 8 to a, a good round 3 8 of an inch. Just a minor, minor chamfer on this edge right here. We want that a fairly sharp edge to uh, to divert that air to the edge of our uh, tubing, but this has got a little rollover on the on the edge right here. Okay. Now using the parting tool, I'm gonna line that up with that edge, zero out the DRO. Remember we made this a quarter inch deep. We've got to have some room for the air to get through there. So we're going to part at point one five zero. So I've got zero out. We're going to come 150 thousandths for the uh, uh, for the thickness of our air deflector. And I'm going to lock the carriage down there. I want this reasonably precise. And I don't often use the power feed on the uh, when I'm parting, but I am on this and keep plenty of lube on it. We've got the RPM turned down to about 500 RPMs now. All right, once I've got a good start in there, I'm going to take my uh, chamfering tool and I'm going to put a 45 degree chamfer on this piece. I think it'll make more sense to you when you see the final result. I don't quite like to change tools a lot while, while the machine's running. Alright, so we'll get this line back up now. And again, I'm going to keep, even though it's aluminum, I'm going to keep plenty of oil, cutting oil on that. Okay, so here's what we have. All right, here's the piece we just made. And as you can see, there's a little channel here, if you will, or a deflector to move the air. The air is going to come up through these four outside holes. The center hole is of course going to be the stem uh, that goes, that holds everything together. That will mount in there. As you can see, there's just a little bit of room now. There's about 10 to 12 thousandths on each side of that for the air to come around. And that of course is going to be directed right on this edge right here. Another piece we're going to have to make shortly is just a little spacer to pick this up. As you can see, this was 250 thousandths deep. This was uh, parted off at 150 thousandths. What we'll have is a washer in between the cup and the air deflector to bring it up level with the top here, flush with the top. So we need a spacer 100 thousandths to bring that up. Now, the diameter of it, if I measure, we don't want it to interfere with those holes. So if I measure that, it's just a little over three quarters of an inch. So I've got a piece of three quarter inch stock in the lathe now. I've polished up the outside of it and I've cleaned up the uh, face the end as well. 
So what we're going to do is drill a 3 8 inch hole in there. This doesn't need to be reamed. Again, this is just a spacer. Zero the DRO and then come in one hundred thousandths. Alright, while I'm right here, I'm going to go ahead and cut two more of these. We're down to one more piece to make before we start putting all the uh, air whistles together. And that piece is the, uh, the cap for the, for the resonator. Uh, I've got some uh, stock cut. Remember I said everything will be uh, size-wise will be determined by the diameter of your pipe. Uh, this cap, uh, my pipe's an inch and a half. This cap is an inch and three quarters. Give just a little bit of overhang uh, around, around the edge once that slides in. I have some pieces of inch and three quarters uh, faced on one end. Uh, saw cut on the other. They're seven eighths of an inch long. So we're going to face this end. Uh, then we're going to turn this down. Uh, we're going to turn a half inch of it down uh, to fit. inch and as usual set my carriage stop all right we're looking at a diameter of 1.420 of course we're going to measure it to fit the uh, the tubing itself So I've got about 214 thousandths to go, and then we'll, we'll take about 200 thousandths, then we'll get a, uh, another measurement. This doesn't have to be a press fit, but it does need to be a good snug fit. Uh, if it's press, if it presses in and doesn't deform the tubing, the resonator, that'll be perfectly fine as well. And that's good right there. And according to the DRO, that's what M1000. All right, so. Now we're going to drill and tap that for the 3H24. The other end is already faced, but we want to turn it around and put just a little uh, chamfer on the edges. So now we have a cap made for the resonator. I'm going to do the same thing for the second one, and then we'll have our three made. All right, I'm going to do a dry assembly. Uh, on all the pieces. The only thing I've not showed, shown how I made was these two brass nuts. And they're nothing more than some brass stock that I had uh, knurled and tapped to the uh, 3 8 24. This bottom one will be the to lock the uh, cup and bell pieces together. 
Uh, the top one is just a decorative piece to go between the cap and the finial. Also another little piece that I made, again, just simple finial, uh, nothing fancy at all, some 45 degree uh, chamfering tool turned in there. But what, as I say, what I'm going to do is dry fit these pieces together now and get a length for the threaded rod. After I get these these pieces put on, uh, I will actually tune the uh, this whistle. Next piece is our uh, locking nut. And that top brass nut too, that big big nut at the, uh, at the top up here, that will also serve to lock the resonator in place. All right, that's on. Our air deflector next, of course, with the, uh, with the bevel to the inside, our spacer, and then our cup or bell. And I want to thread that on there just to where the threaded rod comes even flush with this part on the inside in there. I'll run this stuff up a little bit, get it out of my way. Now, what I'm going to do is take the, I'm going to just screw an air fitting into this end. And I'm going to take the air gun and holding this up so that this is free to vibrate. I'm going to tune the whistle. As you can see right now, pretty much don't have anything. But the closer we get, this may get loud now if you got earbuds on or headphones. Sorry about that. So what I've done is screw the resonator up and down until I found the, uh, basically in my case, uh, it's not that I'm tone deaf. It's kind of like my wife says about uh, colors. I'm not colorblind. I just never learned my colors. But uh, I just turned that until I got a loud, consistent, sound out of that. All right. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to want to cut this rod off right here at this end. Right at this length right here. So, since everything has got to screw back off, I'm going to take a Sharpie and put a little mark down there. Now, I'm going to take this back apart. I'm going to take all this assembly apart. I'm going to cut this piece of threaded rod here. I will carry it to the lathe and drill and tap this end down here for a 1032. That's what, uh, what I've got in the end of the finials. So I'll do that uh, off camera, and I'll do the same process to all three of the whistles, and then we'll come back for a recap. Okay, folks, I think we're ready to wind this project up. Uh, for me, it's been a fun project. I've enjoyed uh, making these. Uh, uh, got a little headache right now, but uh, uh, from tuning them and playing them. But here's what they sound like individually. This is the 12 inch. Notice it's got a deep tone to it. Here's a six inch. And here is the three inch. Get ready. All right, I'm going to take just a moment 
mount all three of these on the manifold and bring you right back for the final conclusion. Here's all three of the whistles mounted on the manifold. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a little application on my iPhone uh, called Muni Musician's Kit, and it sp uh, supposedly can detect notes. And it's showing each one of these as being a C sharp. What that means, I don't really know. As I say, I'm not tone deaf, I just don't know tones. But uh, got all three of them in here. It's not as loud as I'd like it to be, but the reason it's not is I just don't have enough air here. I'm on tank pressure now, got 120 pounds, through a quarter inch line. Uh, well, it's quarter inch fittings. I guess that's eighth inch hose though. So I don't have the volume, near the volume I would like to have uh, to wake up the whole neighborhood. But here's what she sounds like blended together. <laughs> It's a good, pleasant tone. Uh, according to my decibel meter, it's uh, registering about 80 decibels. Uh, the individual ones on 100 pounds of, or about 120 pounds of tank pressure was maxing it out past uh, that, my decimal meter will go to 120. And it was maxing it out with those. So I need a little more air pressure to really, like I say, wake up the neighborhood. But uh, I'm pleased with the uh, with the project. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, I think it turned out well. Uh, each time when I doing something like this, I wind up making usually one more of each piece when I'm making multiples in the event that uh, I mess up one. And I've got enough to make another whole whistle. So I'm gonna put that together. And if I can uh, uh, crank up a little bit more air, I may turn this out here, put an elbow in the end of this manifold here, turn it up, and make it a four-tone. So, again, I hope you've enjoyed this little project. It's, uh, it was fun. It's pretty well a useless, uh, useless project, but uh, uh, it was a fun project. And I enjoyed building it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Oh. <laughs>